Okay, so you've chosen to download my Lightbox Profiles file. Thank you. Wanted to go over a few things real quick. In this zip file, there's a couple different folders. There's a folder for each of the different classes of bamboo printers. Uh, this is based on the way they inherit their settings. If you come in and look at the actual JSON itself, they have a line in here that says inherits. Well, this matters. Um, in this case, the X1, X1C, X1E, and P1S can all inherit from the X1C. Uh, however, the P1P, A1, and A1 Mini all have their own classes. I've tried making files that don't have this inherits line, and that just messes things up real bad. So um, I've just gone through and created a different folder that has both the face and the base profile for each one of those different classes of printers. Uh, whichever printer you have, go to that folder and import them. Um, from here, I also made a couple of examples just to look at and see. I made up a little five minute light box. Uh, two components in here, one is the face, one is the base. Um, I exported these the way I always do uh, for the face. I just did a save as mesh, did a high quality 3MF, and then for the base, I turned off the face and exported a step file. This is just the way I do it. I know people do it different ways. It's how I do it. Uh, you're welcome to come in here and poke at this and look at the timeline, watch how I made it, see all the different steps. Uh, you're more than welcome to. It's why it's included. Uh, that's what's inside the Fusion folder, both the exported files and the F3D itself. So if you want to look at those, go for it. I wouldn't print this because it doesn't have any holes in it or anything. It's just a, like I said, a five minute example. Uh, Studio Files has both a base and face 3MF. These are directly out of Studio. So in this case, I loaded the face up. The beauty of using 3MF is I have all of my object names. So it was three clicks to assign the white color to this and I was done with it makes it easy. All the normal settings are in here. This is everything that's in those JSON files. So if you were to go and slice this, you'll have the nice clean lines, the uh, all the settings, everything that makes these things print nicely for me. Um, feel free to take a poke at how that file looks if you want it as an example. Um, something to, oh, well, that's wrong. That should say textured plate. I'll save that when I upload it again. Anyways, um, one of the things to look at in here, the way this works is based on having a well-tuned material profile. If your material is not tuned, if it does not have the flow ratio tuning, if it does not have the pressure advanced tuning, I cannot promise it will work properly. Um, very important on this. This is mentioned in the readme file that's in that zip file. It says it down here, you must have your profiles tuned. Your, pr your filament must be dry. Can't promise it'll work well otherwise. Works for me. Follow these instructions. Hopefully it works for you too. I've had a lot of positive feedback on this. I hope you will have good results with it as well. Now, um, if I were to take this and change to say P1S, nothing's going to change because it still has all of my profiles because all of my X1 profiles will show up for the P1S. But if I go and look at a P1P, I don't have any profiles. It's just the system pre uh, presets. So here's what importing this looks like. First of all, make sure under preferences, you have developer mode turned on. You should do that anyways, I think, but you want to have that turned on if you want to be able to see everything else. However, file, import, configs. Come in here to that folder you've extracted from this zip file. I'm looking at a P1P, so I'm going to open up the P1P file. I'm going to select these, click open. It's going to tell me it imported two configurations. Cool. Now when I come back over here, I have two user presets. I have my two presets for the P1P. So I can apply that, click slice, and now I have all the same settings, all the same values that I would have had otherwise. If there are things that are specific to that printer, say for example, acceleration speeds being slower on an A1 Mini than an X1C, those are not defined in these JSONs. So if I come back in here and look at like the A1 Mini and pull up its face profile, there's nothing in here about acceleration. I think the only speed that's mentioned in here is sparse infill. All the rest of the speeds and whatnot, I don't think they get mentioned in here. Uh, initial layer is slow. Yeah, 
be ideal with that because I'm not defining those speeds because I'm not coming in here and saying 200 and actually typing it in. Because I have not modified this, it's going to default back to using whatever it inherits from that default profile. So whatever the A1 Mini, let's go back to the A1 Mini. Whatever speeds it would have here are what speeds it's going to have here. Uh, now, if I were to import these, these speeds should not change. So it should be safe to operate on any of the printers. Uh, I've gone through this a couple different times and not seen any issues with that. So give it a try. Let me know how it goes for you. Hopefully everything comes out nicely. If you have any issues, let me know and I'll be listening. Thanks.